everyone welcome to the next session of uh, solutions chapter in this about colligative properties so let's see one by one what are colligative properties and how does uh, the vapor pressure and uh, amount of solute changes these properties that will be the topic now so colligative properties are these okay first and the uh, first property is relative lowering of vapor pressure of the solvent second is depression of freezing point so here the vapor pressure of the solvent is a colligative property freezing point of the solvent is another colligative property so what happens when add a solute it actually decreases so depression of freezing point elevation of boiling point of the solvent and the last property osmotic pressure of the solution now all these properties depends on the number of solute particles okay so whatever you add that is solute particle irrespective of their nature okay relative to the number of particles present in the solution so basically it uh, just depends on the number of solute particle that you have put in that's why we call them colligative property now let's focus on the first property that is relatively lowering of vapor pressure now if you remember in the last session i discussed about this graph okay so this graph is telling vapor pressure and this here is the mole fraction so if you see whenever you add a non volatile solute what happens the vapor pressure decreases okay and this was actually given by rolls law so on this equation again, p1 is equals to p0 x1 okay now we will try to see how the amount added of uh, the solute is going to affect the lowering of vapor pressure like how much will be the pressure getting lowered now so if you have noticed mole fraction in the vapor pressure of the solvent will be this that is p1 is equals to x1 p1 not now if you see the vapor pressure is getting reduced so reduce vapor pressure pressure will be p1 not minus p1 okay where p1 not is of that of uh, pure solution okay there, there was no solute particle inside so the difference is actually your vapor pressure difference or reduction in vapor pressure so this p1 can be expressed as x1 p1 not so x1 p1 not you can take out p1 not common and this is the value we know that x1 plus x2 is actually equals to 1 so you can write down 1 minus x1 as x2 simply delta p1 is x2 p1 not so delta p1 divided by p1 not is going to be your x2 right so here this is actually relative lowering of vapor pressure so relative lowering of vapor pressure is actually equal to x2 okay what is x2 x2 is actually the mole fraction of the solute particle relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to the mole fraction of the solute now if there is there are more than uh, two solution uh, two components okay like for example if there are 3 4 5 components so this part here will be a uh, submission of all the mole fractions of solute particle now here i can write this because x2 is what mole fraction that means number of moles of second divided by number of moles of all the components inside okay this is the value of x2 put that this is the scenario now assume that you have added very very little amount of solute okay if the amount of solute very low n2 is far less than n1 so you can ignore the value of n2 in the denominator and simply write n2 by n1 remember that this is approximate valid only for dilute solution whenever the solute particle is very very low in quantity and then later on you can express the number of moles as given weight by molecular weight given weight by molecular weight so if you want to calculate molar mass this is a perfect equation you just measure the relative lowering of the vapor pressure and equate it to this you will get your molar weights okay now let's go on to the next colligative property that is boiling point here what happens is elevation happens of the boiling point now what's the definition of boiling point so when we were kids we were having some different definition now we will follow a different definition that is this one so okay 
so liquid are bo uh, liquid boils at a temperature at which its vapor pressure is equals to atmospheric pressure note down liquid boils at a temperature at which its vapor pressure is equals to atmospheric pressure because what happens let's say the atmospheric pressure 1 atm so whenever you have a uh, uh, let's say solvent it uh, if you increase the temperature slowly 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 vapor pressure as soon as the atmospheric pressure is equal to it the liquid whatever you had is going to go in the atmosphere right so vapor pressure is actually equal to the atmospheric pressure that is the new definition that you have to know. now from the previous colligative property we know whenever you add a solvent to uh, whenever you add a solute to our solvent the vapor pressure gets decreased so you see the vapor pressure has decreased so if you see here you need much more amount of temperature to achieve one atmospheric pressure okay so this here is representing your um, temperature on the x axis so delta uh, sorry tb not was that of the pure solvent tb is that of the solution boiling point of solution difference between the two is delta tb that is your elevation of boiling point now so this is here okay so we saw the definition we also know that vapor pressure of the solvent decreases in presence of a non volatile solute now here you should note that the elevation of boiling point it depends on the number of solute molecules rather than its their nature so again we will do the derivation so here uh, this is b minus b not which is actually delta tb now delta tb is the elevation in boiling point so this elevation of boiling point for dilute solutions it is again proportional to m where m is molality please note down where m here is molality so in order to remove this proportionality constant you can uh, proportionality constant sign you can introduce the constant kb so delta tb is equals to kb times m where kb is your boiling point elevation constant or molal elevation constant the units of kb are in kelvin kilogram mole inverse okay remember that this equation is again valid for dilute solutions a dilute solution means we are having less amount of solute inside so molality number of moles divided by weight uh, divided by the per kg of solvent just express value you write down this if you press it here you can and calculate the sorry you can calculate uh, if you put it here you can calculate the molecular weight of the solute particles this is one of the technique calculate m2 the other are known some numericals based on this all our class now next colligative property is depression of freezing point okay so let's say that this is your frozen solvent this is your liquid solvent we know whenever you have uh, added an solute particle the vapor pressure decreases so this is your solution always lies below the solvent so if you see you need more lower temperature to freeze the solution as compared to the liquid solvent now also note down the definition of freezing point of a substance it is actually defined by the temperature at which vapor pressure of the substance in liquid phase is equal to its vapor pressure in solid phase okay so this is the new definition so here also we do the same calculation okay so what we do is actually delta tf that is actually tf not minus tf you can see here this here is tf not this is tf so tf not minus tf is the depression of freezing this here again is proportional to your molality just put the value that's the scenario we introduce a constant f which is known as freezing point depression constant or molal depression constant again you can express molality as number of moles of solute divided by kg of solvent and you can express this m here and you can find m2 that is the molecular weight of solvent 
so that's it in this session guys okay i hope you guys enjoyed in the next session we will be uh, looking at another colligative property that is the osmotic pressure and then we will see what happens when we are talking about dissociation and association guys thank you